Well, math is typically seen as a set of isolated skills and procedures for kids to learn in a very sequential order. Usually, problem solving comes after we teach kids those skills and procedures. But I have a guest vlogger today who wants us to change that. I'm Christina Tonneval, the Recovering Traditionalist, and today we're looking at the key to developing young math problem solvers in our quest to build our math minds so we can build the math minds of our students. Without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to my guest this week, Sue Looney. Hi, I'm Dr. Sue Looney of Looney Math Consulting. Thank you for being here today. Today, we are going to tackle a myth. This is actually not true. And so today we're gonna to learn why this isn't true and we're gonna take a look at some of the work and how that builds on a foundation of understanding counting. Often, people believe that students can't start doing story problems until they've mastered their basic facts. That we first have to do some skill and drill practice before we can add in the context of a story problem. But it turns out it's the exact opposite. Actually, the context of a story helps a child visualize what's going on and it gives them a purpose for making sense of the mathematics that's involved. So without context, we might be able to manipulate and play with numbers, but why, what's the purpose? What is it attached to? And it turns out that children as young as age three are able to start solving problems that have to do with addition and subtraction and patterning. And once they understand the cardinal meaning, they understand that when I count a collection, that's how many objects are there, they're able to start reasoning about problem solving. I'd like to unpack further now this myth of young children not being able to solve problem solving and how counting is what links to this ability to solve problems. Here's a story problem that I presented to a preschool student. And if you take a moment and look at the context of this problem, you'll see that what's required here is the ability to put three amounts together. And so specifically, they're putting together a two, a two, and a one. And if we think about this from a standards-based lens, we might think, oh, this is a first grade problem. You're putting together three add-ins. A child needs to be able to add. But actually, if we understand counting, we can make sense of this situation. And you can see how interested this child was in figuring this out. So I sit with this child who is four, we have this conversation and they say to me quite clearly, yes, there, there were five. And I say, how do you know? And they say, well, two, two and one make five. And as they're saying that to me, they're putting up all of their fingers and then they've got a, a full handful of five. And then further, they're so interested in thinking about putting amounts together. They say, well, I wanna know what two, one and five equals. So they wanna know more. They now know and feel powerful that I can use counting to figure out cool things. And then they know this word equals, which is interesting information to me. Here's a kindergartner with a task. And if we look closely at this task, buttons for snowmen, we might think that this is a story about multiplication. So we have a story about building three snowmen and then getting rocks for the eyes and nose. But we don't explicitly have there are two rocks for eyes and there's one rock for nose or we have the word each which tells us something, right? We just have a story and so we're having a conversation around a story and we have a child who can solve this with counting. So in this story you can see that the child counts and we can see the numbers so they are able to write their numerals and we can see on the top of their hats one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then at the bottom, we can also see the rocks for each snowman. So there's an awful lot going on in this problem. And in order to solve this, they're using counting. So they're becoming um, 
powerful mathematicians building on what they know and using drawings. I love this example here because what you can see is this child is not interested in making detailed drawings like the last child. So again, we have a story problem here that's about putting three amounts together. And this four-year-old student knows how to do that by counting. And so we can see here, first Max counts three cars. And so they go boom, 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 three cars. They don't even need to draw cards. Dots will do just fine. Max counts one car, there it is. And then last, he counts two cars. And then they count them all up and decide that there's six. So using counting and the ability to represent thinking on paper, but a bit abstractly here at four years old, powerful complex problem solving. Back to our snowman problem. This student here is in preschool and so they are using their fingers and they draw this picture of this hand and I let them draw that out and I see that they kind of highlighted the first three fingers and almost like scribbled out, you know, the other two with black and they focused on those three. And so I say, I see that you've drawn this hand here. How many are there? And they say, oh, nine. And I say, well, how do you know? And then they show me and you can see that they start at the thumb and they do this really cool repeat counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine foundation of multiplication going on here, sitting on the ability to count. So we've got three groups of three going on those three blue fingers. Really cool. The last one I want to show you is back to kindergarten. And it, this is a different problem about how many hats these students have all together. We have Jack and Anne. And you can see that this child is thinking about tallies and 10 frames. So building on the models that have been used in their instruction, they're able to take that. And, and really what we see here is some um, powerful use of moving between models. So we're moving from tallies into a 10 frame and then filling this 10 frame in in a really interesting way. So taking five and then saying six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So really interesting how they're using their tools for counting. So we see students that are able to count using drawings, using fingers, using dots as representations of objects. We've got tallies. We've got an interesting use of 10 frames. We've got three add-ins, we've got multiplicative thinking, and we have four, five, and six-year-old students. And so when we teach our children to count with deep understanding, they are 100% capable of complex problem solving. Thank you so much, Sue. Now, before I jump into my kind of concluding thoughts here, I wanted to share a video of one of my own kids. I loved seeing the strategies and the ways that kids were modeling the problems on paper, the way that Sue had shown, but it doesn't have to be on paper either. Here's a video of my oldest son when he was... I think, he, let me think about this for a moment. I think he was four because we were celebrating the birthday of my third child when he was one. They're about three years apart. So he was around four, four and a half at the time of this video. And we had made cupcakes for the one-year-old's birthday. And I had asked my son how many M&Ms were on the cupcakes. So let's take a listen. Okay, so each of those cupcakes had three M&Ms on them, and we have five but cupcakes. I, but then I took one, two, three, that means one, two, three, four, since Camden can't have M&Ms. So only four of them have, cup, have M&Ms now, so how many M&Ms are there total on those four cupcakes? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12. So 12. how many MMs? All three is, makes 12. Good job. 
what I love about that video is it's a four-year-old solving a multiplication problem. That's really what he was doing. That problem is four times three, four groups of three, four cupcakes with three M&Ms on each, right? And as long as a kid can count, they are powerful problem solvers, right? Now, many of you have seen videos that I've done about the cognitively guided instruction stages of how kids solve math problems. But just a quick little refresher here, that direct modeling and counting, these two, two stages down here in the bottom, counting is the foundation of these two stages. This is where the kids are counting every single part of the problem in direct modeling. That's what you saw my son do there. In that counting phase for that problem with the cupcakes, a kid would see the group of three and be able to say three, then six, then nine, then 12, or they might have to count one by one some of the ways in between there. But counting phase for multiplication is when they're counting by a certain amount that they're seeing those groups there. It still revolves around counting. Now, all of my work the last many, many years has been on helping teachers move kids out of those two stages by building their number sense and helping kiddos get to the derived fact and fact stages of cognitively guided instruction. But these two stages down here in the bottom, that direct modeling and counting, are so, so important. And they heavily rely upon kids' ability to count. And that's why I've teamed up with Sue Looney to bring a brand new course to Build Math Minds. Sue's course, Counting on Number Sense, is for pre-K through first grade educators. This course will give you an understanding of what it takes to help your students count. Counting seems so easy, but it really isn't. And it's such an important foundation to build for our kids because everything else we're going to be doing around mathematics is built upon that counting foundation. And once kids can count, they are powerful problem solvers. So registration for that online course is opening up soon, but before it does, we'd like to invite you to a free training that Sue is doing called the power of counting, three reasons why you need to focus on counting in the early grades. I hope to see you there. We're doing a few different days and times to give you choices on when you can attend. But remember, it's live, so you gotta show up, come be there live. We will have a recording, but we also offer certificates of attendance if you show up live. But the most important part is it's free. It's a free training we're doing, so come on over. The link to join will be down below this video. All right, I hope that this video has helped you build your math mind so you could go build the math minds of your students. Have a great day.